everyone, my name is Matiri and today we're going to be going over part two where we make a, a project template that we could use for all of our projects when we're scripting for GTA 5. Um, so I have open um, Microsoft Visual Studio 2013, there we go, sorry. And the first thing we're going to want to do is right here, start, and you can go to new project, or you could even go up to file, new project. Now, like I said in the previous video, we're going to be using Visual C Sharp. So we're going to click Visual C Sharp, and in here we have Class Library. So we're going to go to our Class Library, and let's name this something useful. <clears throat> I will call it Script Tutorial, and browse for wherever you want to place that. And I'm going to put it just inside of my .NET thing and I'll make another folder called projects and I'll select the folder and there you can see everything set I have create directory for solution that just makes it a little bit more organized and I'll click OK when I'm made sure everything's alright so it's on class library visual C sharp and I have it where I want it good so I'll click OK and that's gonna load and the first thing we could do is just delete all that code we don't really need it and we're going to be doing it from scratch anyway. So the first thing we need to do is add our references. Now your Solution Explorer might be over on the right. By default mine's on the left now. So inside of your Solution Explorer right click on references and click add reference. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to assemblies, framework, and scroll down until you find system.windows.forms mine's right here and check that off. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is click browse and we're going to look for our script hook um, dot dll. So go to wherever you made the folder um, script hook v underscore dot net or whatever you called it. Click on it and inside the top layer directory there will be script hook v dot net dot dll and we'll just double click on that and you can see it's check marked. I have two. Don't worry about it. You should only have one. Um, so just check that off and click OK. So you could see that added a bunch of different things to our references. Most importantly, if we double click on the script hook, we have all of our um, functions that we can use inside of our scripts. So now we just need to reference those in our class 1 script, which I'm going to rename to script tutorial. Great. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up usings. So using GTA in caps end in a semicolon. All of our lines are going to end in semicolons. I know some programming languages you don't need to um, put them, but in C sharp and C plus plus and C and all that you do. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to do using GTA, using system with a capital, and using system dot windows dot forms okay that just tells our program the namespaces we can use and it goes to our references gets us those um, functions and just makes our life a little bit easier so now we're gonna have to set up our actual class our script class so the way we do that is we do public class the name of our script so script tutorial then space colon space script press enter and then do an open and closing curly brace and we're just going to save this um, just because we have a decent amount of stuff done um, so now inside of our braces we're going to want to set up our constructor now a constructor is something that happens right when the program is run um, if you don't know about constructors you could read up on them they're pretty easy to understand. It's just when this script is called, it'll run whatever is in that constructor. So the way we make a constructor is we do public, and then the name right here has to be the exact same, and then a parentheses, open and closing, and then open and closing curly braces on the next line. So what has to be in our constructor? Well, for the dot script, the .NET script hook, we have to have a tick, a 
on key down and an on key up. We don't necessarily have to, but for this tutorial, we will make all of those. So let's start with the tick. We'll do capital T tick plus equals and then on tick ending in a, a semicolon. Don't worry about red lines now. We just don't have any functions named. Right now we're just binding them. So we could start them. So our tick event is going to happen every frame or every interval of frames, which we'll go over interval a little bit later. Um, it's pretty easy to understand. Um, a tick is one frame you do something, the next frame you do it again, in every frame you do that, or every 10 frames you do it, or every 20 frames, and so on. So on the next line we'll do key down plus equals, that's our binding, on key down. Now this means that every time our key is down we do that function. Um, so when our key is pressed down it plays or it does whatever is in this function which we're going to be writing fairly soon. Um, now the next one is key up plus equals on key up. This is kind of like the key down only it only works when the key is released. This is nice um, for like spawning things. If you have a spawn on key down and you're holding the key down it'll instant or it will infinitely spawn until you let go of the key. That's why it's nice to have the key up. So you can hold the key down forever, but it won't do anything until you let go of the key. Anyway, let's continue. Now I'm going to do a couple spaces down and I'll do interval. Interval equals 10. Now our interval is how many times we run the tick um, event. Um, so 10 means 10 milliseconds. So every 10 milliseconds we will run our script again and it'll do the tick event. It'll check to see if a key's down, if a key has been pressed up since the last event, and then so on and so forth. So if we want one second intervals, then we'll do 1000 milliseconds. And that means our program will update every second instead of every 10 milliseconds. So if we have it on zero, this means that it's always running. It's every single frame you'll be running the code. Now that could be a problem if you have a big like code that's uh, process intensive, um, but for now we'll just keep it at 10. We won't worry about it unless we have some issues with lag and whatnot. Anyway, let's continue and let's get rid of these um, red squiggly lines telling us we have syntax errors. So we're getting syntax errors because these are functions that don't exist yet. So let's make them exist. We'll do void on tick spelt the exact same way open parenthesis and the first thing we're going to want to do is object sender comma um, event args and then just e you can name it whatever you want I like e that's what's given in the uh, example that Crosshair made for his script hook so I'll just keep it like that and now you can see that squiggly line went away now you might be thinking, cool, I could just do this for every single one. And you're kind of right. So we'll just copy it and we'll change on key down and change this to on key up. But there's one problem with this. We have to change our event args in our key down in our on key up to key event args. Key event args. Now that just lets us know that keys are being pressed. Um, so now we're done. We have our uh, template complete and there's only one thing left to do. We're going to save and we're going to export our template. We can keep this browser open um, if you want. That'll just be part of the template. So let's export our template. Click yes to save it. Project template click next, rename it, GTA, I'll rename mine to script hook dot net C sharp. And in the description, 
um, a base project to program a GTA 5 mod using script hook v dot net and I will click finish and it's good to go I have another one already so don't worry about that you should only have one if you exported only one so we'll save that and now our if we go into file new project visual C sharp and we go down at the very end we will see our created project and let's just name this something else I have two extra ones don't worry about those um, scripthook.net I will call this it worked and click OK now you'll see we get our um, all of our code is here and we don't ever have to write it again if we don't want to you can if you want I totally understand um, I would do it if you're a complete beginner um, just rewrite all the code again until you have it memorized and then do this um, just so you guys get familiar and understand what's going on but for now this is fine you can see that it even renamed our function which is going to be shown in our uh, script hook log file and when he implements the uh, the console this will be shown um, we could rename this we could rename our uh, CS file we don't really need to but everything's working so that's it for this video and in the next video we'll actually write a program that does something um, but thanks for watching I hope you guys enjoyed please like comment and subscribe and until next time goodbye